truth is, I never experienced real hate until I opened my business. I have noticed that a lot of people want to see me do good, but not better than them. And it used to bother me when they try to hide their hate on their questions like, how's your small business doing? Now, I really don't care what they think. Actually, I don't got time to think because I got to run a business. Well, I still have to think. And reality is, I have never felt like a small business, even though I work from home. And I actually do have a small business, but it's even deeper than that. I feel like it's my mentality, my character, my skill set that make me look a lot bigger than I actually am. So that's why I created this video to share some of my experience and give you guys some tips so you guys can stand out from the rest. So stick around, you might learn something new. But we're gonna talk and work because I'm running behind on some orders. Let's go. Number one, confidence. When you have confidence, you can pretty much do anything, even when all the odds are against you. Like, what's the point of doing something if you already know you're gonna fail? No, you have to go with the mentality of doing it correctly, doing it good. That's my point of view. To me, that makes more sense, if that makes any sense. But not just confidence in the way you speak, also in the way you act, even how you stand. Like, you can sell t-shirts standing like this, um, do, do you want to buy t-shirts? No, you got to stand up straight, look people in the face, and be presentable. Your energy, your vibe introduces your character before even saying anything. Customer loves that. They see you trustworthy. They be like, I like this guy. He knows what he's talking about. I like what he's doing. Let me write him a $10,000 check. You never know. But now, confidence is not gained overnight. To me specifically, it's a combination of a lot of practice and a lot of repetition. The more you do something, the better that you get at it. And the more knowledge that you gain, all that fuels your confidence. And here's a beautiful quote that I came across not too long ago. Everything you ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear. Fear is the opposite of confidence. So next time you're gonna go speak to a customer, relax, take a deep breath, and say it with your chest. Quality, quality, quality. Your focus and your goal should always be to provide the best quality possible. Try to improve your craft at least 1% each day. Shouldn't be a knack of just one day or one time. No, it should be a lifestyle, a habit, a natural good habit. It increases the value of your business. It makes you more trustworthy. You gain respect. You feel good. Overall, you gain good reputation. Also, providing great quality gives you the flexibility to charge whatever you think you deserve. Now, if people can't respect your prices, they don't deserve your quality. It's that simple. But it's not just quality on your product, it's also your service, your marketing, your portfolio. For example, a lot of us promote and market our business through our social medias. If we take a garbage picture and promote it, what do you think people are going to think of us? First, it's not appealing, so it's not going to attract customers. They're going to be like, if we can take a simple picture, how is he gonna be able to print our shirts? People think like that, I'm just saying. Second, they're probably gonna think that we're a lazy business. And there's a lot more, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. What, are you, what is your first thought when you see a picture that's not attractive? Bad quality content can sometimes push away customers. I'm not telling you to go all professional, but improving your content 1% each day could definitely get you more sales. I promise you that. Overall, providing great quality product, a great quality service, and a great quality content can separate you from an average business. So we got another order, and it's only 12 t-shirts, but the print goes around the neck collar. And it looks pretty straightforward, but it's not that simple. Like usually, when I print my t-shirts, the collar is always hanging off the platen, so everything could be nice and flush. But this time, it has to be on top, since they want to the print around the collar like this. But we'll try it. The good thing is that next level collars are really thin, so that might help. Worst case scenario, if the print doesn't look good, 
then I'll do transfers. But before we get into that project, let's talk about the third thing that makes you look bigger than you actually are. And that's being professional with the way you speak, dress, and act. Speaking professionally, it's not an easy task. It's not something that you could just purchase on Amazon. No, it takes time. Well, to me, this was the hardest. Personal issues. First, lack of education. Very small vocabulary. My vocabulary still sucks to this day. And I had a lot of slang in my vocabulary, in my words, that were very difficult to replace. For example, before I used to say, all right, cool, cool, thank you. Now I say, awesome, sounds great, thank you. You notice the difference? I grew up in a not so good neighborhood, so slang was very common here. But uh, if you want to be a professional, you got to start talking like a professional. Also, first impressions could be very important because sometimes looking like a professional can speak a lot louder than words. I'm not telling you to go dress with a tuxedo and a tie because not everybody works in an office. I'm just telling you to look presentable. Wear something casual, especially if you're going to go meet a customer. Don't go away with some baggy pants or with some beach sandals. It doesn't look professional. And I'm just touching the surface of being a professional. Actions speak louder than words. You also have to be polite, have to be organized, have to be clean. You have to be on time. You have to smell even good. And there's a lot more things. Now you decide, do you want to be treated like a professional or like a regular? Average. I don't want to be average. So I'm always pushing to do better. It's always the first print that gives you a challenge. But after that, it's a piece of cake. Just a small FYI guys, I couldn't show you guys the end results. Customer wanted to keep everything private. And I was like this of killing the surprise. Anyways, I might do shorts in the future, but I don't know yet. So let's get back on track. I see you in everything. You're working it all out for me oh what can i do but sing and give to you all the glory you put all sometimes in business or even in life we have to take a step back or even a couple and focus on improving ourselves mentally physically even spiritually correction especially spiritually your health is important, and if your mind is not right, you won't be as creative as you can be. And every time you hit a roadblock, you're not going to see the full picture, and you're just going to be stuck there on the problem. For example, if you're lacking on something, like me with my speech, do something about it, because my pronunciation sucks. So what I do now, I uh, talk to you guys a lot, which is helping me a lot with my verbal expression. Also, every time I read, I try to read out loud, well, when I'm by myself. It's helping me be more fluent with my words. It's all about filling yourself with more knowledge, sharpening your skills, so you can outgrow the position that you're in. All right, I gotta stand up, cause um, I'm a little too shaky right now. I just finished a large iced coffee. But anyways, exercise. It's also very important. And it's good for your mental health, your physical health, and your emotional health. It releases stress, it gives you confidence, and it strengthens your joints if you do the exercise correctly. And I'm not telling you to go run a marathon or to be a bodybuilder. Just go outside for a walk because it's gonna make you feel good. And when you feel good, you work good. All right, I gotta sit down again for this one cause this one's gonna be a little bit more deeper. And it's spiritually. I know a lot of you guys are not religious and that's totally fine. I'm not either. But I do believe that you should have a relationship with the Most High. And I don't follow Christ because I think I'm perfect. I'm far from it. I follow Christ because He's perfect. And I have witnessed His power. He has changed my nature by renewing my mind and giving me a new heart. Just look at me. Look at all my tattoos and all my scars. A couple years ago, you guys wouldn't recognize me. So that's why I can't stop preaching. Because I have found that truth. That truth that sets you free. And here's my last tip. And it's something that only you guys can bring to the table. And it's your own sauce. But let me tell you a quick story so you guys can understand what I'm saying. So on the next block, there's three Mexican restaurants. They're literally together, almost back to back. They all sell tacos. And they've been in business for a while. It's because they all have a different sauce. They are all unique in their own little different way. Which is pretty awesome. Your sauce is your style. 
that's something that only you can bring to the table which is going to help you separate from everybody else on top of that it's going to help you build a really strong community it's about creating your own sauce with your own ingredients man i'm a philosopher and here's the truth if you think small you will achieve small if you think big you will accomplish big reality is that social media is run by these huge corporation companies who invest a lot of money in their ads it's pretty impossible to compete with them especially on that style and when it comes to selling local i don't have a shop i work in my garage so i'm not exposed to the public and this is why i use these five strategies to stand out from the rest because at the end of the day i'm like david in a world full of goliaths thank you so much for the love and support have a beautiful day and God bless you all. All right, that was a little awkward. My neighbor's over there. He's looking at me like,